Hi, this is Mr. New, and welcome to another episode of Illustrator CS5 for the East Korean Technical Academy. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the Gradient Mesh tool. Before we get started with the Gradient Mesh, I want to show you a cool way of being able to create an image, a drawing on Illustrator. And what I basically have done is I went out to the internet and I picked up a royalty-free image of a butterfly. I'm going to go ahead and just click on it out here, out of my folder, and drag it onto the stage. Go ahead and center it a little bit, and I'm going to angle it about like that. That's uh, how I want to draw it. Now, on top of that, I have the layer one selected down here in my layers. I'm going to go up here to opacity, and I'm going to drop that down to 50%, so it's kind of grayed out a little bit. All right, now I want to add a new layer. So go ahead and click on create new layer at the bottom of the panel and I want to go ahead and lock the butterfly layer so I don't accidentally click drag and drag that around while I'm working on my new image so with that done let's go ahead and grab uh, the pen tool and we're going to do the pullouts and I will zoom in first thing I'm going to do is using the pen tool I'm going to outline the body and I'm going to look at the body as in two major pieces we have the main torso and we have the upper body and it looks like we might have some eyes there. I'm going to click right here at the joints, come down here to the tip a little further and I'm going to curve that. If I go back here up to this part of the body where it comes together, click again and across. With my direct select tool I'm going to clean that up a little bit. There we go. So we have that and now I want to add gradient color to this. So I'm going to go over to gradient and let's make this a linear gradient. We're going to set the angle over a bit, but more right about there. And on the lower body, I want to have some curves going on in here. So I grab my arc tool and I'm going to draw a few arcs across the body here. One, two. If I select all of those, I'm going to bump the stroke up a little bit, maybe three points. That looks pretty good. Direct select again, and we're going to pull these pieces over more. Now, if I'm working fast, if I really wanted to take my time with this, I'd probably really get in there and fine tune. But this will work for now, and now I'm going to select it all, and I'm going to group that as one piece. Command G to group. Take a look at layers. I have a group. I'm going to go ahead and lock that group because I don't want to accidentally grab it while I work on the upper part of the body. So I'm going to click there, click at the top part, but I'm going to make this kind of bulbous a little bit. There we go. And then back down here, right about there. And then finally we'll connect across. So it's all one piece. Let's see if I can make that be a little more symmetrical. There we go. That looks a little more symmetrical. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do a gradient on this as well. We'll also go linear. And I want it more black, less white. There we go. In fact, this will probably turn that into a gray. And now for the eyes. For the eyes, I'm going to go ahead and use an ellipse tool. The eye is about that big. Let's get rid of the stroke. We're going to go with a radial gradient. And we'll give our bug blue eyes. Send this to the back, so if I go under Object, Arrange, Send to Back, and we'll adjust it just a little bit more right there. Copy it, paste it, and rotate this one the other way. Send that to back, Object, Arrange, Send Back, and there's our bug eyes. Now, last thing we want to do is add some antenna. For this, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my paintbrush tool. No fill, add a black stroke. In fact, let's go with just a dark gray stroke. And let's go ahead and paint. Okay, we're going to go with a black stroke. Three points. And let's make it contoured a little bit here. Basic. And contoured. And maybe four points. There we go. That's looking better. We'll select that. Copy and paste it. Transform, Reflect. And we'll curve that into position as well. OK, 
Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. Come back out. And I kind of like the way that's looking. Let's go ahead and select the entire body and we'll do a Command G to group all those. Let's go to Layer. We're going to unlock that. Select both sets now and group that as well. So now we have a few layered groupings happening there. And we're going to relock the body. So let's go ahead and start working on the wings now. I'm going to start at this part of the body. We'll click. We'll start with a curve here. And then this one, just a very slight curve. And we're just going to keep adding some anchor points here as we go around the wing. We're going to treat each wing separately. Close that one off. Let's lock that one temporarily. And we'll start another one right over here. Where we left off with that one, we'll click there. We'll click here. There we go. We'll have these overlap just a little bit. And then that wing. So now, when I click off of this, let's go ahead and unlock the first wing. We have our two wings. We'll zoom out a little bit again and take a look. I'm going to hide layer one. Click on the eye to hide layer one. So now I have my two wings in the body. Let's go ahead and select both of those wings. I'm going to go to Object, Create Gradient Mesh. And for this, we're going to go with uh, a four rows, four columns. We could change this. We do want it to appear to center. And let's go ahead and hit OK. So this is now our gradient mesh. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that a little bit. Now, what you need to understand with this is the color is going to be generated at the anchor points, not in the fill areas. We're going to start by getting our direct select tool, click off. Notice it disappears, but when I hover over, it appears. Let's go down the center line. I'm going to click on the first anchor point, hold the Shift key down, click on all the anchor points that follow this line. And there's one more right here. I'm going to follow the center line on this one as well. Let's click there, there. And I'll pull out my swatches panel. Let's make this purple down the center. There we go. Let's go ahead and select another set. I let go of the shift key. Click on that anchor point. The next one. And then on this, we'll start over here. Pick yellow. Let's go down the outside. We've got to get every anchor point that was left out there. Some of the anchor points we created, other anchor points come from the gradient mesh. That looks good. Let's pick uh, blue. Okay, we're going to go down this next row. Oh, let's take a look. How about maybe a light green? And then finally, the last set, we're going to go to the outer edge here. Oops. Got to hold the shift key down. All right, let's go back to our blue again. There we go. Okay, so there's our wings. If I click off of that, we have the one set of wings on the butterfly. Now, we can adjust some of these anchor points by grabbing our selection tool again. And this time, I'm going to kind of drag some of these so they overlap a little bit better. There we go. OK, and we can pull this out to have like an extra piece coming off the, end of the butterfly there. And now, if we go to our selection tool, select both sets of wings, copy, and paste. Go to Object, Transform, Reflect. Zoom out a little bit. Go ahead and move this into position. Okay, and now we've got our butterfly. Now, 
we go ahead and select the whole thing. In fact, let's go ahead and unlock those layers that we had locked. Select the whole thing, do a group. And we can actually now shrink this down if we choose to, holding the shift key to constrain. Copy it, paste it. And now we've got a pair of butterflies. And that's using the gradient mesh tool and being able to trace from a photograph. That's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one.